When it comes to James Corden, you either like him and think he's funny or dislike him and think he's a total jerk. It's a thought process that many people have been discussing recently, ever since he was kicked out and banned, for a day, from a New York City restaurant. But to be clear, it wasn't a one-off in terms of his behavior, just the opposite. This was the latest in a string of events and incidents where Corden has pushed things too far. As a result, many people online are throwing hate at him, and fairly so. But what might not surprise you is that he has some enemies in the court of celebrities as well. We'll break it down for you, but before we do that, that, go ahead and do us a favor by leaving a like on the video, subscribing to the channel, and hitting the bell icon so you never miss an upload from us. And with that being said, let's get straight into the video. Do you want to win an iPhone 12? Maybe a MacBook Pro? How about $500 cash? All you have to do is comment the secret hidden message somewhere in this video. That's it. Oh, and leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel so we can keep affording these giveaways. Winner will be announced at the last day of each month. Thanks for watching and good luck. Number 5. Asia Argento and Rose McGowan James Gordon is welcome back at a New York City hotspot restaurant after being briefly banned. Just hours after Keith McNally, owner of Soho restaurant Balazar, took to Instagram to claim that the TV host was, quote, the most abused customer to my server since the restaurant opened 25 years ago and banned him from his establishment, the owner said that James called him and, quote, apologized profusely. Let's start off with one that really showcases Corden stepping in it in the worst of ways. In 2017, a sea change in Hollywood took place with the hashtag MeToo movement and other organizations calling out men for decades of unchecked offenses of a sexual dialogue with several jokes about Weinstein. For example, called the evening so lovely that Weinstein, quote, has already asked tonight up to his hotel to give him a massage. Then he cracked. It's been weird this week, hasn't it? Watching Harvey Weinstein in hot water. Ask any of the women who watched him take a bath. It's weird watching Harvey Weinstein in hot water. Two of the women who accused Weinstein of deplorable acts of SV didn't think Corden's jokes were all that funny. Shame on this pig and everyone who grunted with him, tweeted actor Asia Argento via The Guardian, and Rose McGowan called Corden a mother piglet. Corden later apologized via a statement on Twitter, writing, I was not trying to make light of Harvey's inexcusable behavior, but to shame him, the beer, not his victims. I am truly sorry for anyone I offended. That was never my intention. How many celebrities have tried to get away with that statement? His focus should have been on helping people with AIDS, not making tacky jokes that had no place being there. Asia and Rose were right to lay into him, and we're sure others at that gala felt the same way. Number 4. Liam Gallagher Every late night show has a signature shtick, a reoccurring comedy bit that keeps fans tuning in year after year. For Jimmy Kimmel Live, it's celebrities reading mean tweets about themselves. For The Late Late Show with James Corden, it's the host and an extremely famous singer driving around Los Angeles in a car, singing along to the musician's own songs in a segment called Carpool Karaoke. Quote, having f***ed up myself more than most people, I strongly believe in second chances. He then quipped that he's only allowing him back if he lets him host his talk show, The Late Late Show, for nine months. All jokes aside, Keith ended his message by addressing Gordon directly, writing, quote, So come back to the five and dime, Jimmy Gordon, Jimmy Gordon. All is forgiven, XX. It's Gordon's most popular contribution to the culture by far, and the likes of Adele, Britney Spears, and Lady Gaga have taken part. In a 2017 interview with GQ, Liam Gallagher, the former lead singer of 90s alternative rock sensation Oasis, said that if asked, he would not do karaoke. No, thank you very much. He said, no, chance, mate. With the fat bloke from Kevin and Perry, he added, seemingly referring to Corden's old sitcom Gavin and Stacey. What's more, Gallagher said, James Corden is a knobhead. When the Daily Beast asked Corden if he'd caught wind of Gallagher's remarks, the host said he had, and then Corden offered up a sarcasm-drenched response. I don't know how we'll even think of carrying on. Yeah, God, what will we do? A fair remark from Corden on this one. Sometimes people just don't like you. Number 3. Ricky Gervais This one might not come as a surprise because Ricky Gervais is the kind of comedian who isn't afraid to let people know he doesn't like them. He's also a comedian who isn't afraid to be insulting in his jokes, as his numerous times hosting the Golden Globes have proven. The irony, though, is that in many ways, Ricky Gervais and James Corden have lived out parallel careers. Both are comedians who came to prominence on British television shows they starred in and created in the 2000s, The Office and Gavin and Stacey, respectively, before jumping to movies and eventually hosting American. American TV productions, the Golden Globes for Gervais, and the Late Late Show for Corden. According to a source close to the situation in The Sun, the seeds of a nasty rivalry were planted when Corden played Gervais on his 2009 sketch comedy series Horn and Corden. In the years since, Gervais has publicly teased and criticized Corden on multiple occasions. As The Sun's source said, Ricky is now somewhat obsessed, attacking James when his jokes fall flat and poking fun of his size. For example, after Corden bombed with the Harvey Weinstein jokes we mentioned earlier, Gervais told 
told Radio Andy that Corden didn't do it well enough. And at the 2020 Golden Globes, Gervais quipped, the world got to see James Corden as a fat. He was also in the movie Cats, but no one saw that. Number 2. Jack Allison Jack Allison wrote for Jimmy Kimmel Live in the 2010s, and as such, he's a member of the Writers Guild of America. In 2019, he told a story on Twitter about the time he went to a union that James Corden also attended. I'd like to state once again for the record that I went to a WGA meeting for only late night writers, and James Corden showed up without any of his staffers to advocate for a lower pay grade for late night writers. Keith previously provided two examples of Gordon's alleged behavior claiming that Gordon found hair in his food and demanded free drinks or else he would write a, a bad review on Yelp. In another alleged incident, Keith claimed James yelled at a server over his wife's food. That means, according to Allison, Gordon apparently made a special trip to ask a trade union to allow him to decrease the salaries of his own employees at the Late Late Show. Allison claimed that Gordon wanted to hire writer's assistants for 13-week stints instead of for longer periods as contracted. Full-fledged writers, which by the WGA rules would carry a higher salary. He was framing it positively as, we want to give writer's assistants a chance so maybe there should be a lower pay grade for them, he tweeted. According to Allison, WGA officials quickly dismissed Gordon Corden's request, while on Twitter, Corden related a different version of events. I would never, ever want to pay a writer less than they deserve. Never, the talk show host wrote. I love every writer on my show, and all I ever wanted from that meeting was to explore whether talented people could get a better opportunity. Allison dug his heels in, tweeting, What I said was accurate. Considering how other hosts have treated their staff and the state of writers in Hollywood right now, we're inclined to believe Allison over Corden, just saying. Number 1. Artie Lang Comedian Artie Lang got his big breaks in the 1990s as an original cast member of Mad TV and a star of Norm Macdonald's cult classic, Dirty Work. That led to one of the most prestigious gigs in radio. Lang served as a sidekick on the extremely popular The Howard Stern Show on radio from 2001 to 2009. The incident comes amid James' last season hosting The Late Late Show, and he is set to step down in spring 2023. He was asked to take a hiatus from the show because of substance AB issues. In 2019, Stern told the New York Times Magazine that he does get Sona, which has grown less raunchy and abrasive and more celebrity friendly over the years. He's the only guy that could have said, you. I think Ellen DeGeneres' is dancing is stupid, Lang said before confusingly dragging the Howard Stern Show guest, Corden, into the fray. When James Corden opens his fat mouth to do karaoke in a car, something that wouldn't be funny to the secretaries at an accounting firm, and gets an Emmy for it, I'm allowed to say he sucks. Misplaced anger? Perhaps. But there are plenty who don't like carpool karaoke, despite it becoming a part of pop culture in certain ways. Oh well, to each their own. And there you have it everyone, a group of celebs who matched the public's feelings about Corden. Which of these celebs were you surprised made it onto the list? Which of their comments about Corden do you feel was the most fair, given what he did to them or others? Will Corden ever be in the good graces of people again? Or is he doomed? Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you next time on the channel.